Welcome everyone to the First Waves podcast, which is for all of you who would like to further boost your career development and continuously improve day after day. If you want to bring even more value for your company, bet on yourself and have a great career in the corporate world, this podcast is for you. This episode is sponsored by Wave, business excellence footprint, an environmentally friendly online training company that cares about your personal development. In today's episode, we are going to speak about the power of networking and how you can use it to achieve your career goals. I have the pleasure to introduce you to Matt Sitter, who lives in San Francisco, California, USA. He is the CEO of AFN, which stands for Advantage Foundry Network, which is a global CEO network dedicated to finding opportunity in change. In this role, Matt enables the collective and diverse wisdom of AFN members to help leaders deal with challenges from dealing with their board to aligning their teams to driving their products into new markets. Matt is also the founder and principal of Kinetic Path, offering executive coaching, leadership development programs and analysis of team effectiveness. Matt has developed multiple tools to assess communication within leadership teams, guide leader prioritization and optimize their meetings. He has effectively advised leaders from various industries and companies including technology, private equity, hedge funds, defense, real estate, healthcare and more. Matt has been a student of optimizing performance through his experience as a senior leader at multiple organizations including the McChrystal Group and other firms across healthcare technology and professional services industries. His philosophy has been informed by working with top leaders in the industry, the military and the public sector. I am thrilled to introduce you to this amazing guest, Matt. Hello, Matt, and welcome to the First Waves podcast. It's so great to have you here. Hi, Juan. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for your time. In a nutshell, could you please tell us how did you get to where you are today and what is your passion? So all careers are along in winding path. The earliest part of my career after going to business school, I was working in a variety of healthcare firms, uh, thyroid cancer diagnostics, cardiovascular diagnostics, uh, electronic medical records. And the common thread for me was that I was managing people that I did not share any of their functional expertise. So nurses, dietitians, software developers, uh, all these people who had gone really deep in their field and I couldn't have micromanaged them if I wanted to. So I had to lead by helping them understand, hey, where are we trying to get to and how can you contribute around it? And this really activated in me this desire to understand more about how organizations and teams work well and make that my career. And I joined an organization as a result of that called the McChrystal Group, taking what the United States Joint Special Operations Command, which is the SEALs, Rangers, Delta Force, all these people you hear about in movies, they've got to work together. They don't necessarily even like each other. And so how in in an environment where information was flowing so quick, how they actually changed how that all worked and information flowed. And at McChrystal Group, we were taking the concepts that we had built up within Joint Special Operations Command and then applying them to the private sector. A lot of that is around how are behaviors and systems operating. And so from the behavioral perspective, that led me to become an executive coach because then I had the opportunity to help people influence how they were leading and how that could actually make a difference within the organization. And then what operational systems are we putting in place to drive an organization to the right place. And so today I run a CEO network based on a lot of the concepts um, from that. And also I do executive coaching and leadership development. Wow, that sounds fantastic. And if I think about how you described it all, I think a lot of it was your curiosity that you had throughout your career. And every time you're curious about something, you started asking yourself new questions and then you started learning about the answers. And that's how it always got you then to the next step and to the next level. I think that's right. Yeah. Intellectual curiosity, I think, is important for all of us. What are those things that interest you? If you want to ask more questions about something, very naturally, you're going to find yourself in situations that uh, stimulate you and want you make you want to do the best job that you can. 
So that's why I think if we are parents of little children and when the children start to get into the age of asking a lot of questions where we get so annoyed, it's actually wrong to tell them to stop asking questions because it's a good thing to have. Yeah, because if you are then later on growing up to become an adult and then later work in business, it is actually good to be asking a lot of questions. And even those silly questions are also good questions. So. You know, sometimes one should not be too hard when to say to the kid, hey, stop it. You, you need to get out of that phase. <laughs> right, right. And I think that's hard. But yeah, we live in a world of change. Yeah. And being able to understand that change, we're always in this position of trying to understand how does this change impact me? How should I be doing things differently? You get there by asking questions. Yeah. And if I look into the toolbox of uh, process improvement, there is one tool that's called the 5Y. And 5Y, because you yeah, have to sure. ask something at least five times and then you're going to get closer and closer to the root cause and maybe you will then identify what needs to be done yeah from the root cause and not just from the superficial why <laughs> and absolutely absolutely well so what would you recommend for employees who are starting off with their career and these employees aspire to become the leaders of tomorrow what would be your things that you could say this is what i would recommend I think there's all sorts of things that you can be doing. I think that, you know, having that general mindset, intellectual curiosity is really important. Thinking conscientiously about the network that you're developing matters a lot. Um, some of the statistics that I've seen on how networks influence your capability to actually grow your career. So someone who is consciously focusing on their network, they're 35% more likely to receive top performance evaluations, 43% more likely to receive a promotion, 42% more likely to be retained. So all these things are positives when you're thinking about your career and how you're actually driving it. And the people around you, no matter what, your own performance matters a lot, but how you are working with and through people will matter even more as your career continues to evolve and grow. That's so powerful. A lot of people think when I get now to the next level, I'm just going to burn my bridges and everybody who helped me get to that level, I don't care anymore about because that was the people who helped me get here. But now I need to look for new people around me. And that sometimes I think it's not the right mindset to have yet because we should always still be in contact with people who have helped us to go the next step in our career, but still stay in contact with them because one never knows what the future is going to bring. Maybe that person's going to be your future right. manager in 10 years from now. <laughs> Yeah, you don't know where things are going to come back around. And also, you know, there's a lot of twists and turns that happen in our careers. The idea of staying with one company throughout your entire career, that's out the window. You know, that's not going to happen for many people at all. In fact, with younger generations of workers now, they're a lot of times doing side gigs as well. So they're thinking about, hey, what else can I be doing? I'm a portfolio of work activities. I'm not just working for one place, which increases the likelihood that you're going to come across these connections that you had in the past. And, you know, with some of the tools that we've got, like LinkedIn now, you can actually say like, okay, I have a reference now on what's going on with Juan's career. I can always come back and say like, hey, Juan, how are you doing? I've got that opportunity to be able to look at that in the longer term. Yeah, things are really changing. And I think the way how we did networking a couple of years back is totally different the way how people are doing networking today. And, and also the speed of, of networking is just is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the concepts that you and I talked about earlier, and I think it's relevant for how people think about it, is this idea of Dunbar's number. So Dunbar's number is 150. Does not truly matter what that number is. But the idea is that 150 being the number of relationships that any one person can actively manage at a given time. And so that 150 will change over the course of your life. And it includes absolutely everyone. So this is your family, this is your friends, and these are your coworkers. And if we think about that 150, again, the number for each of us as individuals, it could be as low as 50, it could be 300. But this is a scarce resource that we should be actively thinking about managing. And if it's a scarce resource, we should be deliberate around it. And so although you may have connections that you've had in the past, they may move out of your 150. You could still go back to LinkedIn and reach out to them at some point. But these relationships that you're really spending a lot of time making sure that you are cultivating, thinking about what are those relationships that are really important to you for those objectives that you're trying to reach next and what that means for who you're talking to, how you're talking to them, how you're actually getting involved with conversations with them. And that's really where one starts to realize, well, what is the quality 
of the people who are around me. Yeah, if, if I have a specific goal and I want to go one direction, but a lot of people who are around me are actually doing other things that are not aligned with my goals, then maybe I really have to reevaluate who I'm spending time with, yeah, my valuable time, so that these people together as a group, I can also motivate them, they can also motivate me, but that we are actually going towards the same direction and we have the same beliefs, the same vision, values, and so forth. Yeah. And you get different things out of different people in your network. So thinking solely is just like, hey, I need to be focused on only my industry connections. Well, there's people in your network that provide critical support to you in some other ways as well. And so um, one of the things that I have utilized is it's called the leadership network diagnostic. That actually helps you look at, you know, around the, you know, the top 15 people within your network and gives you a sense on, all right, what are what do I rely on them for? What's the depth of that network? How is it diverse? How are they helping me perform better? How are they helping me actually recharge my batteries as well? So having this this sense around, you know, you can say like, hey, I'm trying to build my network. I want to understand anything. Sometimes you need a framework on top of it to say like, all right, here's what my network looks like right now. Here's what I want it to look like. And then you can build up action steps from there. And as an employee who is looking ahead and would like to have a nice career development, what would you say, how important is the ability to do networking, to be good at networking for him or her to succeed in their career development? So, I, you know, we talked about some of those stats earlier. I do think your network's going to matter. That's going to be what drives opportunities for you going forward, the people that you know, and being able to develop relationships with them. So they're a reality. I wouldn't necessarily put the label on saying like, oh, I've got to be networking more or something like that. I Again, I would go back to this idea. Hey, how am I remaining intellectually curious? Who can I learn from? Who can gain from knowing me as well? And, you know, when you think about if you're going to be a part of an industry organization or something like that, because that'll help you expand your network, getting closer to the center of that network is going to be what yields the most value for you. And what that means is if there's going to be an event going on, volunteer to be a part of how you're organizing it. For those people who are more introverted and don't want to be out there meeting everyone, this is actually a great way to do it because you've got tasks that are oriented with what you're trying to do. So you're saying, all right, got to help organize this. I've got to be sending out invites, things like that. It's not about, hey, I've just got to meet people as I'm trying to get things done. But this gives you a much broader view of who's actually in that group and gives you excuses to have the conversations that you want to have. Wow, that's pretty good advice. Yeah, I remember if I look back, one of my employees was a fantastic project manager, but not many people within the organization knew who that person was in my team. And even though when we did the year end review and I said, OK, all your goal achievements were fantastic. You did all the great projects, you get the results, but not many people know you in the organization. And the only way for you to be able to then find better projects and identify more, I would say, improvement potential within the company, then you need to expose yourself. You need to be out there. You need to somehow connect with other managers, other people, other departments, because otherwise you will never have that exposure to new improvements that you can identify. And it was really amazing because that person then really put it as their goal for the following year. And it, it just started as a very simple thing. This person was just having lunch with uh, some people from other departments within the organization. And that way it just expanded his networking right. within the company. And then suddenly he had access to other things that were happening in processes that could be improved. And then he had a project idea that where he could help them. And then he solved that problem that they had since years. So it's just so magnificent to see how just simple things like getting to know more people and adding them to your network. Not only it's it's good for you, but it's also good for them as well. I think what was so critical there was it was a deliberate goal for him. So, you know, he's like, okay, this is something that I want to be able to get done. What we've seen is the people who have the best ideas within an organization are people who are connected to people who are unconnected to each other. So they act as this clearinghouse for ideas. They can be an integrator of thoughts because they're hearing about a lot of things from different people. And if they're actually connecting these two groups that would have otherwise been unconnected, they're actually providing a tremendous amount of value. Being in a network is not a zero sum game. There's a lot of ideas that'll never ever come up unless you're actively trying to talk and learn from other people. That's powerful. 
for the next question, it might not be that easy, but what would you say are some do's and don'ts for employees who are starting out with building a network? Well, so I think one of the things this happened during the pandemic where transactional communication increased a lot. When you think about transactional communication, think about buying a cup of coffee. Okay, if I go to a Starbucks and order a cup of coffee, I give them money, they give me back a cup of coffee. That person who made that cup of coffee for me doesn't know or care if I was actually just thirsty and I could have needed some water, right? So there's this context that could have been driven around that. And when you think about transactional communication, it's I'm only reaching out to you because I need something. You're only reaching out to me because you need something. And the value of transactional communication is really easy to see. Did I get what I want? And did I get it fast? <laughs> but all the context is missing around it. So think about how you're actually providing context or gaining context as you are communicating with someone. Just wanting a particular thing and looking at it as a transaction is not going to be a win for you as you're thinking about your network. The other thing I would think about, and this can actually be along the same vein, is as you're trying to build your network or as you're trying to learn about people in your office or otherwise, if you can identify some of their values, if you conscientiously going into it and saying like, hey, what's important to this person? What am I learning about that as a result of this conversation? It changes the conversation and subsequent conversations quite a bit. If you have a good understanding of what's important to them, you can actually frame your thoughts so they are more likely to stick with that person. They're more likely to be understood. Fantastic. That's where, again, curiosity comes into play and that's where empathy comes into play again. Yeah. So that's where you need to, Absolutely. Uh, as an employee or as a beginner in, in this uh, world of uh, corporates, that you need to somehow like step out of your body and try to look at the situation from the point of view of the person in front of you. And if you get better at that, then you, you will be much better at your communication as well. Yeah. And some of us just need like that Again, your colleague who set the goal of connecting with more people, if you go into a meeting saying like, hey, all right, you know, I got to get done the objective of the meeting. <laughs> but if a secondary objective is understanding the values of that person, it's more likely to happen. Yeah, so true. And could you share with us a success story of someone you know who did really good with networking? So a colleague of mine, he, um, he was in the Navy SEALs for a number of years enlisted person in the Navy SEALs and became a master chief. You know, the officers say, this is what we're going to do. But the master chief is really the person who makes everything happen around it. And as you could imagine, what they are doing in the SEALs is quite a bit different than what you might be doing in the consulting world. But as a result of the relationships that he built and the competence that he was able to display, we ended up working together at a consulting firm and subsequently worked together a lot as a result. But he had to display that competence and be able to show that he could understand a variety of things. And his experience, if you just looked at his resume, would never ever translate to management consulting. But because he was able to show what he looked like in action and how he was able to do many of the skills that are really important in terms of that relationship building or being able to be understood by folks, that made him a great person to move into this other career path. Yeah. And that's usually not like the normal thing that you would think about. Yeah, Nobody would ever come to that realization that exactly that aspect will make him advance in, in such a different direction in his career. I, who you know is going to matter a ton. Yeah. I think that that is what it comes down to. And so making sure that you can be known and understood as well is really important. Then people know more how to look out for, hey, what are the right things that are going to be opportunities to put in your lap? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like the, the final words that you said, the opportunities that are put in your lap. It's because sometimes people think, well, is there such thing as destiny or is there such thing of that somebody just crossed my path because it was just coincidence or because it was for a reason? Yeah, And somehow, you know, I always have to believe that some people just cross my path for a reason because I have a specific goal that I am visualizing for the future. And I think if, if I really visualize that over and over again, I'm just attracting that like a magnet towards me. And that magnet is also then bringing other people to cross my path. And I'm saying, oh, hey, if I'm meeting somebody right. tomorrow, then maybe this person is meant to cross my path because this person will also help me go towards that vision even uh, sooner. Yeah, I, one of the things that I've heard is luck is the combination of uh, opportunity and preparation, well, right? And so if you're, 
you know, you can say, oh, that person's the luckiest person in the world. Well, you know, maybe they won the lottery or something like that. But a lot of times we're making our own luck. We're actually thinking deliberately about those things that we're trying to have happen. And therefore, when these opportunities come across our path, we're actually more prepared to seize them. Yeah, that's so good. The listeners are very hands-on. And that's why my next question for you is, could you please give us a, an actionable step, maybe a tool or a technique that the listeners could apply after this episode? Yeah, I'll give you two thoughts on this. So one is that idea that we brought up earlier saying, hey, if I'm in a conversation with someone, can I identify what their values are? All right, that's a great way to say, like, I'm going to practice empathy here. I'm going to understand what that other person's perspective is. Really easy to put that in. Have it as a secondary goal of any meeting that you're going into. The other thing I would say is be a student of communication. So no matter what, how you are understood is the whole point of communication. It's not about saying something, it's about being heard. And so the emails that you write, the meetings that you have, uh, the text messages that you send, how are you being understood? How can you actually do a better job on that? And a lot of that is around how the person on the other side is understanding what, what they're hearing based on all their experiences. Are they hearing what you want them to? So thinking really hard about how can I be a better communicator? Fantastic. And I think a lot of the listeners are not yet there in the management role, but they will soon get there. They will be the future managers of tomorrow. And that's why I think it's really good for you to explain to us what is it that your company does and what are the services that you offer because they could be your future clients. Sure. Two things that I, I work on currently. So AFN, Advanced Foundry Network, that's a CEO network with the idea of bringing CEOs together to be able to mutually support and understand one another to increase the ideas and opportunities that they have. So that's one thing. Uh, Kinetic Path is my consulting and executive coaching firm. So we offer executive coaching and leadership development within Kinetic Path. We also offer some of those assessments that I talked about earlier, uh, the leadership network diagnostic, which can be valuable to someone at any level, and um, Strengths Finder, which if your audience doesn't have experience with Gallup Strengths, I think it's a fantastic assessment. Helps get you an understanding of, hey, what are those things that I have built naturally as strengths? And then by focusing on those, I can actually you know, create much more opportunities for myself. And these other things that are out there, these other strengths may not be weaknesses, but it helps point out who are those people that I want to partner with who have those strengths and really being able to identify those. So that, again, that's valuable for someone at any level. Excellent. I'll be putting that into the show notes. And there are further things I can put into the show notes. Where can my listeners find you? Absolutely. So uh, LinkedIn, really easy. My name is Matt Sitter, S-I-T-T-E-R, just like babysitter. And the websites that I have, afn.global. And then uh, for Kinetic Path, my consulting and executive coaching firm, that is thekineticpath.com. Perfect. I'll be putting that there as well, just in case somebody cannot take notes at the moment, then they just have to click on the link great. at the end of this uh, episode. So it was really great to look at the topic of networking. So that was a little deep dive that we did there. And it again shows how important it is for our career development, because usually when one speaks about career development, one thinks about being better exactly at that specialization of what you're doing, you know, maybe becoming a better accountant or how to do with a system A or system B. So usually people think in that direction, but they'd never think about, hey, maybe I can become a better networker. I could do my networking better. I can maybe get to know more people who know more things that can also then at the end create those synergies so that I can then get quicker to my next career development step. I agree 100%. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Matt. It was a real joy to speak with you and hope to see you soon again. Thanks, Juan. Great fun. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> what a great conversation. I hope this episode with Matt has triggered a few ideas on how to improve the way you manage your network, making your development more successful. Before doing anything else right now, I encourage you to reflect on what was discussed today. In the show notes, you will find all the links on where to find Matt and how to contact him. This podcast was sponsored by Wave Business Excellence Footprint, an online training company that cares for your career development, your personal development, and the well-being of this planet we call home. 
On the website www.wave-bef.com, you will find courses designed for managers and courses for employees who strive to become the leaders of tomorrow. I value your feedback and I would love to hear from you. Please rate, subscribe and share this episode with those whom you think will profit from this information. Your support means the world to me and it motivates me to keep producing content that adds value to your life. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode.